was a lovely day. We went to Zamuri, a, a little uh, beach town, to spend the weekend. Uh, we went for a run in the morning with my dad. And then in the evening, the phone rang and it was people from the security services asking my father to go to the headquarters. We thought that it would be just another interrogation because during the past four years he has been interrogated on several occasions. But then two hours later we heard someone knock on the door and then we saw six agents and they gave him five minutes to change his clothes and he, he left. The next day they took him handcuffed to the offices of Radio M and Maghreb Emergent. They asked all the journalists to leave the offices and then they took all the equipment, like the computers, the phones, the printers, like everything, and they sealed the offices. Tin Hanan is talking about her father, Essan El Kadi. Until six months ago, he was one of Algeria's leading journalists. This past week, he was sentenced to seven years in prison. The charge, foreign financing of his outlets for political propaganda, out to harm the security of the state, charges Tin Hanan calls bogus, part of a long witch hunt of a journalist who's been a thorn in the side of the Algerian government. There are numerous theories as to what triggered El Qadi's latest arrest. It could have been this tweet. It could have been this podcast. Aujourd'hui, on discute du deuxième mandat de Ahmed Djitoubou. C'est un peu démoralisant. Il faut la, il faut l'admettre. It could have been this op-ed penned for Maghreb Emergent just one week earlier. His latest article, I think, was the reason why uh, he ended up uh, in prison. It is basically an informed opinion article that analyzes a tension between uh, the army and the president, and the tension is about the upcoming election in 2024. It made them so angry, all of them, that somebody would dare talk about the army not being happy to have him run again as a president. Talk about frictions between the army and the president is not something that you want to do in Algeria today. Algeria Today is run by President Abdel Majid Taboon, with the backing of the military brass. It's far from what millions of protesters had hoped for back in 2019. The movement, or Hirak, demanded more democratic governance, something anything other than a fifth term for the then president, Abdelaziz Bouteflika. Hopes were raised when Bouteflika stepped down. The new president promised to listen to the protesters' plight. But many remained skeptical that someone anointed by the old guard could really deliver a new Algeria. Most of Algerians did not buy this narrative of a new Algeria. Since the exit of Bouteflika, we've seen General Gaid Saleh, who was on television every week, addressing the, the nation openly. So the Algerians understood the real locus of power, meaning the military were still there and they were still gonna run uh, the show. <laughs> Many actually say that Taboon wasn't really elected by the people, but he was rather designated by uh, the army, which has historically been like the most powerful institution in the country politically, and uh, the, the military is really the kingmaker uh, in the country, and Taboon was seen as the, the favorite option for General Gaid Saleh. President Taboon talked about change. But what was really striking was the fact that while he was talking about amending the constitution, repression was at, ve uh, at its highest. He was cracking down on civil society organization, on journalists, on blogger, on Facebook influencer, and so on and so forth. So I think the message was pretty clear that Algeria was still ringing in the old. Old tactics die hard. More than a dozen journalists have been arrested, others jailed. A number of news outlets have been suspended or shut down. 
And there's a new media law that critics say is strengthening the state's control. But perhaps the most overt change has been the president's public attacks on dissenters, describing journalists like Hassan al-Qadi as habarji, informants. A few weeks before the trial, the president went live on national TV to say my father was actually a spy or an informant. This was at a time where the investigation was still going on, so it was a huge breach to my father's presumption of innocence. If the president says, uh, this guy is a snitch, then like we all know that the judges are going to feel compelled to sentence the journalists. That a president takes the responsibility for accusing uh, journalists on TV, on national TV, we've never seen it before. The Algerian regime have always shown a level of intolerance for like public criticism, but it never went to this kind of a machismo, and it just paralyzes everybody. Like nobody wants <laughs> to suddenly become uh, we put all this to President Taboon and his Minister for Communication. We didn't get a response. But we have a pretty good idea what his answer would have been because he delivered it just last month on World Press Freedom Day. Time and time again, Taboon has reiterated that freedom of the press in the country isn't just fine, it's flourishing. Oh, he does that all the time. That's the only answer he has. His answer is always like, look at how many newspapers we have. But this is not an answer. It's not about how many you have. It's about how, how many real newspapers you have, how many real journalists you're throwing in prison. We have this narrative that it has one of the most vibrant uh, press in North Africa. What is in reality on the ground is totally different. What is on the ground is that a regime that wants to control and to keep the media, but also civil society organization on a tight leash. Repression against uh, the media and the press is escalating because the regime wants to make sure that the last voices of dissent and that the Hirak are uh, dead. Neither the president nor the military want a repeat of 2019. Taboon is looking to the next election in 2024, doing everything in his power to project the right image both at home and abroad while casting his critics into the shadows. The country is trying after 10 years of isolation to display the image of a country that is changing, a new Algeria, as Taboon said, uh, a country that is more open. But bottom line, there is no new Algeria. This narrative is totally false. The military remains the real power in Algeria. And what happened to al qadi Hassan and to many other shows today that the problem is the same. It's just uh, really uh, shocking that the last, one of the last journalists who are still trying to stay faithful to the idea of professional journalism, of independent journalism, is in prison. Most other dailies, news uh, websites, uh, TVs are just mouthpieces of the regime, applauding to everything that is happening and cheering for this like slogan, the new Algeria slogan of uh, Abdel Majid Taboon. Ihsan al Qadi's sentence is indicative of the desert that they want the Algerian media landscape to become.